for stopping by. I'm gonna show you some really cool things you can do with your iPhone on iOS 9. I'm your iGadget lady and I do the research so you don't have to, so stick with me. Let's dive into some of the coolest tips and tricks for your iPhone running on iOS 9. The first thing, you can manage storage on your iPhone. To do this, go to Settings, click on General. Next you want to click on Storage and iCloud Usage. Now once you're here, you're gonna see the storage from your iPhone and also the storage in iCloud. What we're concerned about is the iPhone. So you can see I've got 73.9 gigabytes that I've used already and I've got 39.7 gigabytes available. I'm in trouble. <laughs> anyway, so to manage that storage, what you wanna do is click on that Manage you can see now which apps are actually using the most storage or the most space on my iPhone. So I need to clean that up. What I'd start with is this photos and camera app where I've got 27.7 gigabytes that I'm using. Music, I've got 14 gigabytes. And podcast, I've got 6.8 gigabytes. So this tells me what apps are using the most space so that I can go back into those apps and clean those up and free up some more space. One cool thing that they've introduced with iOS 9, and I frankly don't know what took so long, but you've got a search bar in the settings app. So instead of having to scroll all the way through your settings to get to where you wanna get to, you can search for something. So let's say for instance, I'll search for battery. And I'll just click on battery, and it's gonna bring up my battery settings right within the settings app. Now there's some really cool battery features available as well in iOS 9. Let's check these out. We'll wanna go to settings, scroll down here to battery. Now you can see you've got the option to put your phone in low power mode. And I'll read this, it just says low power mode temporarily reduces power consumption until you can fully charge your iPhone. So what this is going, going to do is allow you to use some features and then some uh, effects will be either turned off or reduced so that they conserve battery life. The other thing you can do here, as I have mine, you can turn on your battery percentage so you can see exactly how much of your battery percentage you have left. I love that setting there. You can also choose to have auto brightness come on. I use mine the way that I want it, so I don't have that set, but that's another thing that conserves battery. From here, you can also see which apps are uh, using the most battery in the last 24 hours and in the last seven days, which apps you've used. So that's pretty cool right there. Those are some battery features. Another new battery feature, it comes from the notification drop down menu. So we'll drop that down. You wanna click on today. Now if you scroll down, you can see that this will let you know how much uh, battery life you've got left, uh, the percentage if you don't wanna look there. <laughs> and you can also see like your, uh, your watch battery percentage and then I can also see my Bluetooth headset as well. Pretty cool. Let's take a look at the Photos app. From the Photos app, you can select multiple photos at one time. I'll show you how this works. Before, what used to happen is that you had to select one photo at a time. And that could get a little cumbersome. Now, all you have to do is select by swiping. You can deselect as well by swiping. So select and deselect, simple as that. The other thing that's featured now on uh, the Photos app is that you have new folders. So you have one for selfies. Um, you also have one for screenshots and burst as well. 
I'm loving this new back to feature. Now what the back to feature allows you to do, so say for instance, I'm in my Twitter app and I want to open this up in Safari. So I'll open it up in Safari. Right up here, you've got this cool little back to Twitter. And that works really well, especially say for instance, if you're in your email app and you click on a link, instead of having to close down that particular link and then go back to your email, you can just click that button right up there and it'll take you right back. That's something that's been needed for a long time, in my opinion. <laughs> Let's take a look at something you can do on the keyboard now. The keyboard essentially has capital letters all over it right now. To change that to lowercase, just hit the shift key. Now it goes to lowercase. So say for instance, you want it to show lowercase all the time. It's really simple to change that. You wanna go to settings, let me pop out of here. Go to settings, hit general, accessibility, we're gonna scroll down to keyboard and you're gonna to wanna to turn show lowercase keys off. Now, that's gonna affect again the keyboards that use the shift key to switch between upper and lower case. It'll only show lowercase. I like mine the way it is, so I'm gonna leave it as is. In Safari is that you can request the desktop version. If you're like me, Sometimes you wanna see the desktop version because it has sometimes a little bit more information than you can get on your mobile version. To change to desktop version, this little arrow up there, hold down on that. You'll see where it says request desktop site. You click that and instead of the mobile version, it's gonna actually give you the desktop version in Safari. Let's take a look at Apple Pay. This is another cool one. Say for instance, your lock screen, you wanna to get to Apple Pay, just quickly double tap. Uh-oh, let me go back again. Double tap from the home screen, that's gonna bring up your Apple Pay, you're set to use it. You can easily draw or mark up attached photos in your email, and you can easily attach photos to your email. I'm gonna show you how to do both right now. First of all, if you want to attach a photo to your email, just double or tap that and hold. Click on this arrow, hit insert photo or video. Choose that photo. And before I send it, say I want to mark this up. I'm going to hold the photo. Click on mark up. Now it's going to bring up this menu. Now I can change the colors of the marker I want to use, so I'll change that. I'll also, I can also change the width, I like that thick width. And then I will choose to mark this up. You can also highlight or zoom in on a specific part of the photo if you like. You can insert text. And then once you're finished, you hit done and you can go ahead and send that. So that's how you draw or mark up an attached photo in an email. This is something you can do that should have been done a long while ago. You can now use flash while you're recording a video. To do this, before you hit record, go ahead up in that top corner, you can click on the flash. I've got mine set to auto. If you wanna have it on, just click on and hit the record button and you've got a flash while you're recording. Nice. Now, <laughs> some people don't like that shake uh, to undo uh, in the settings. So with iOS 9, you can disable that. If you don't know what shake to undo is, let me show you right now. I'm just gonna hit that and then if you shake it, you can undo that just by shaking the, uh, the phone, click undo. Say for instance, you hate that feature. Well, thanks to iOS 9, you don't have to live with it. Go to uh, settings, click on general, click on accessibility, 
scroll down to shake to undo. If you don't want it on, you don't have to. iOS 9 also gives you the ability to turn off all vibrations. Say for instance, if you're in that meeting and sometimes you still get those vibrations even though you thought you had uh, uh, do not disturb on or you set it to vibrate, sometimes some still get through. So now you can turn off all your vibrations. Go to settings, click on general, accessibility. I'm gonna scroll down to vibration. I've got mine on. If you turn off, when the switch is off, all vibration on your phone will be disabled, including those for earthquake, <laughs> tsunami, and other emergency alerts. So that's how you turn that off. With iOS 9, we also got 4K video. The only problem is that 4K video takes up a ton of space. So you can choose which types of uh, output options you want set on your camera. To do this, you wanna to go to settings, scroll down, and right here, photos and camera, we're gonna open that up. Under camera, you will be able to change uh, the record or video recording and our slow-mo recording. You've got the options of 720 HD at 30 frames per second, 1080 at 30 frames per second, 1080p at 60 frames per second, and 4K at 30 frames per second. This will show you down here a minute of the video is gonna use approximately how much space. So for 720, 60 megabytes, and the difference between 720 at 60 megabytes and 4K at 375 megabytes. So again, uses up a lot of space. So I don't choose to use the 4K, but I'm fine with using uh, 1080p uh, HD at 60 frames per second. And again, you can change that on slow-mo as well. You've got the choice between 1080p and 720. Now let's check out some new features with the Notes app. The Notes app comes now with this plus button. What's cool about that is that you can add checkbox or boxes, like if you wanna put together some type of checklist for you, you can do that. It also gives you the option to insert uh, videos. You can take a photo or you can choose photos from your photo library. We went over this a little earlier, but with the Notes app, you can also use markup. So you wanna just experiment with that little plus button. There's a lot of different things you can do in the Notes app. Another cool iOS 9 feature is that you can change your notification settings. So you can have them appear in order of app or from most recent to least recent, or you can even group by apps. So you, to sort the order, what you wanna do is go to settings, scroll down to notifications, and hit sort order. I've got mine set to recent. You can change that to manual where you can put the different apps, you can change the order of those in which you want those to appear. But I've got mine on, under recent. You can also sort by app, which I don't want that on either, but that's an option for you. So that's how you change the order and also um, the settings as far as your notifications and how they appear. Another cool thing you can do in notifications is you can change the way that they display. So if I click on notifications from settings, I'll pick one of my apps here. Now for this particular Amex app, I've chosen to allow notifications, show in notification center, and then if you look down here, you can see how you choose to display these when you get an alert. So you can have it show in the middle of the screen, at the top of the screen, or not at all.
thought that was pretty cool. A lot of people don't know that. So hopefully that helped you out. You can restrict the use of apps on your iPhone. Say for instance, you give your iPhone to someone and you don't want them just rambling around and opening anything on your phone. You can restrict apps before you hand it off. To do that, go to settings, click on general, scroll down to restrictions, you want to enable restrictions. Once you do that, click in a code. One, two, three. And then it's going to ask you to do it again. Say, for instance, I do not want to allow someone on my phone to be able to access Safari or my camera. Now, when we go back to the home screen, you notice Safari is completely gone, and so is my camera app. To enable it again, I'll just go back to where I was, restrictions, type in that code, turn them back on. Now you can see Safari is there and so is my camera app. Say for instance, uh, you're playing a game and that game makes you swipe up like this. You don't want that control center popping up every time you do that. There's an easy way you can turn that off. Go to settings, scroll down here to control center, access within apps, you wanna turn that off. Now once that's disabled, you can still access uh, the control center from the home screen, but while you're in an app, it won't work. So there you have it, some of the coolest tips and tricks for your iPhone running on iOS 9 or iOS 9.2. If this helped you, please hit that like and subscribe button down there. It'll help a lot for this growing channel. Thanks again for watching. Also, make sure you're on our VIP list. You can get weekly iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch how-tos tips and reviews straight to your inbox. I'll leave that link below as well. See you next time.